This talk is in connection with umbilical and middle cerebral artery Doppler. We're going to cover the umbilical artery Doppler in the first part and the middle cerebral artery Doppler in the second part. The aims and objectives are to give you the role of Doppler ultrasound and obstetric ultrasound and to also explain to you the limitations of Doppler measurements during pregnancy. A little recap from the science to ask ourselves what is Doppler. It's a measurement of change of frequency in relation to an observer. It's used in ultrasound to measure blood flow. The pulse emitted from the transducer may have a pulsed waveform or a continuous waveform. Pulsed wave is used in scanning whereas continuous continue waveform is used mostly for CTGs. The beam angle changes the velocity of flow measurement and if you're at 90 degrees, you won't detect any flow. The direction of flow is given as blue or red usually. The basic principles of Doppler is that there must be motion in the direction of the beam. The flow must be perpendicular to the beam and no relative motion from pulse to pulse. As the blood, flow as the blood velocity increases, the Doppler frequency will increase. Pulse wave Doppler is used for colour flow and fetal Doppler. Why do we use it? Well, it's to detect changes in blood flow within the placental bed, to detect changes in the arterial fetal blood flow, heart, brain or other organ, and to detect changes within the fetal venous system. This will determine hypoxia or acidosis, and also it is quick and simple to use and the information which is essential can be obtained within a few minutes. We use colour flow imaging to identify the vessel of interest. It identifies the presence of flow and also the direction of flow, the correct angle of incination for velocity measurements. So we apply the colour Doppler over the B mode image so that we can see where the flow is within the vessel that we are sampling. It also gives us an indication where there is turbulent flow which is a quick and easy way to detect where to sample from. And this is another image showing that the colour flow has been superimposed over the umbilical vein and arteries. So let's think in detail about the umbilical artery Doppler. It was first used in a study um, that looked to study flow velocity in the fetal umbilical artery and reported in 1977. So it's a tool that's been in use for a, a very long time. These are the studies that first talked about um, the use of Doppler in obstetric ultrasound with their references. When we sample, we wish to examine the umbilical artery, so we place the colour flow over the, over the cord and where there is turbulent flow, which is dictated, which is shown by the difference in the colours, the green um, and or uh, oranges, is where there is more flow turbulent flow and if we sample there you are likely to very quickly get on to a vessel that is arterial because do remember in the umbilic in the cord you have both vein and artery and it's the artery that you want to sample. When you apply the sampling you get the typical pattern that is seen on the right hand side which shows you the positive channel which is the signal waveform above the line and the umbilical vein is seen below the line. They also have different sounds. The vein is more whereas the artery is more and that you will see as you that you will hear as you sample it. The umbilical artery flow has this characteristic sawtooth appearance of arterial flow in one direction and the continuous umbilical venous blood flow in the other. 
and you can see on the left hand side we've applied the colour box to the cord and then we have sampled where we have seen more turbulent flow and the sample is the umbilical artery is seen above the line and the umbilical vein below the line and the artery has that characteristic sawtooth appearance that you can see there. And again another demonstration of sampling over the cord with the characteristic appearance of the umbilical artery signal form waveform as seen below with the characteristic sawtooth appearance. Note that that is positive uh, flow above the baseline throughout the cardiac cycle. How is it done? Well, it's by measuring the downstream resistance to flow. So what we're doing is we're looking at what is actually going on in the placenta. The placenta should be a very free flowing system. And if there is any resistance to this, it is reflected um, in the cord uh, with our uh, with the Doppler that we apply. We are looking at what is happening in the placenta by sampling the downstream flow. If there is resistance to flow, that will be donated by the shape. So we look at the shape of the resultant waveform and then we measure the peak flow peak flow and the end diastolic flow and the measurements of those two those two gives us whether or not there is resistance to flow within the placenta and we'll see shortly how we uh, how that is done just to give you an idea of the waveform analysis what we're actually doing is we can look at resistive index and pulsatility index and this diagram shows you the two components that we see when we are looking at our waveform. We can see the systolic component and the diastolic component. With the resistive index we are applying this calculation taking the diastolic from the systolic and then measuring it and then take um, dividing it by the systolic. The resistive index is something you could do on a calculator uh, and that sometimes is why it was used originally but most of the charts now talk about pulsatility index because this is given to you by the machine and the reason the machine does it and we couldn't do it with a calculator is you'll see that it's the diastolic from the systolic divided by the mean and that would be a very difficult calculation to do with a calculator but the machine does it for you automatically. So in most literature and in most departments it is the pulsatility index that the obstetrician wishes you to report. The pulsatility index is varies um, when there is impairment of the blood flow within the placental bed. So if you have uteroplacental insufficiency, you get impaired blood flow. This constricted blood flow gives a reflected high resistance in the umbilical artery. The high resistance, therefore, the PI measurement is increased. So if you have high resistance, you get a high pulsatility index. And that will show you if there is increased pulsatility index in the waveform, it shows you that there is a resistance and the, the placenta is not the free-flowing uh, organ that it should be. At 32 weeks gestational age, the normal PA, P, pulsatility index is around 1. But the, pulsative, the umbilical artery pulsatility does vary with gestation and this chart shows you uh, the pulsatility index at the various stages of gestation and you'll note that the resistance does fall with gestation. So a pulsatility index above one, if you have an 18 week pregnancy, is considered within the normal range. But if you had a 1.4 pulsatility index measurement in third, at 38 weeks of pregnancy, that would be considered high. This is the chart by Nicolardi's group, which gives you the expected um, pulsatility index range uh, giving you the upper and lower 
uh, and uh, relating it to gestation. What will happen is your machine will automatically apply this chart and will tell you um, whether or not the, um, it is, uh, it, it, there is increased resistance. The resistance has to be in the upper range. So if you have some measurement that is below that mean baseline, it is perfectly acceptable because the lower the flow, the less the resistance and the better the placenta is working. So we don't worry if we measure it and it's below two standard deviations because that shows low flow. We only start to get concerned if it's above the standard deviation. And you can see when you look at this, why this chart, why a rough, roughly saying that in any stage of the pregnancy, if you have an umbilical artery positive index of one or below, it is within the normal range. And this chart demonstrates that. So let's now think about our waveform when it's abnormal. If you have an increased pulsatility index, you have to increase surveillance because it will indicate, could indicate the onset of early placental problems. Once you have an increase in the pulsatility index, you need to be increasing the amount of time that you look at the fetus so that you do not miss an increasing, a problem increasing. We have stages, we have an increased pulsatility index. You then begin to get absent end diastolic flow. If you have that, you need to scan daily and apply biophysical profiles, other Dopplers and CTG to assess the optimum time for delivery depending on the gestation. If you have reversed end diastolic flow, and we'll see later what that means, this is the worst case scenario. Um, and as above, although even closer surveillance may be necessary to deliver the baby. So we look at what is the placenta doing? And if it's not actually functioning, our first indication is the increased PI. We then continue to look at the baby in more frequently to make sure that if the, if the situation is worsening, that we are, are, are onto that and can transfer the care to the obstetricians or the fetal medicine specialists. This shows you the waveforms with an increasing resistance pattern. You'll see the one at the top um, is normal. And we have what we have seen before, our classic sawtooth appearance with positive end diastolic um, flow seen. The, the waveform is all above the baseline. That is a normal pattern and very reassuring. The second one shows that the pulsatility, the pulsatility index is increased slightly, but also more significantly, the end diastolic flow has reduced and is just above the baseline. The third image shows the waveform with no flow above the baseline at the end diastolic phase. And that's what we term as absent end diastolic frequency. The fourth image shows the waveform with flow below the baseline, which in fact is reversed end diastolic flow. So going from picture two to picture three, we have a worsening pattern. This placenta is very restricted by the time you get down to the reversed end diastolic flow. If you have reduced end diastolic flow with an increased pulsatility index as you have at picture two, then this is when you would be referring um, the baby to the obstetrician.